then let's start. Um, my name is Andreas Ferber, still, and uh, next I'm going to talk about um, cross-compilers for um, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and uh, the current um, status of that, since in particular there's been recent developments here. Um, this is intended as a very quick lightning talk only. Um, the GCC packages that we use for, for the OpenSUSE distribution, um, in particular in that context native builds, um, are being developed in the Devel GCC project by the Tooltain team from, uh, from Zuse mainly. And then there's also some uh, cross compilers in a specific um, cross Tooltrain repository. There's uh, several of them, like um, AVR. Recently, someone started working on Extensa. Um, there's MSP430 and um, some other one that I can't think of right now. Um, at some point, Hack Week 10, um, a colleague of mine, Richard Biener, um, looked into building cross compilers for the OpenSUSE distribution. So not just that are um, available on the OpenSUSE distribution, but for the architectures that OpenSUSE uses. So that means for um, x86, um, PowerPC, uh, ARM, maybe also S390. And uh, those packages were we using the glibc that was being already been built on the native workers um, via aggregation. And what I have now been looking into is building pure cost compilers um, that do not require to have um, an OpenSUSE um, already building natively, such as in the previous presentation for MIPS. Also, um, the one that um, originally um, inspired me to look into this was uh, one of the ARM boards that uh, I was enabling, and both for OpenSUSE and Upstream. Um, they, um, the Parallela board not just has um, a dual-core ARM processor on it, it's also got an um, FPGA logic, or sorry, a programmable logic, um, which then is used to connect to the ARM cores an Epiphany coprocessor from Adaptiva, and this was being used kind of as a, a very low memory um, mesh um, computing type of, um, yeah, mostly maybe mathematical coprocessor for um, speeding up certain um, calculations. And of course, you can, um, for, for many um, things, you can download cost um, compilers um, from external websites, be it um, in source code form uh, with, you know, like scripts how to do that, or um, binary, like for instance, you can get an um, ARM um, cross compiler tool chains either from Linaro or from some um, ARM launchpad site. Um, sometimes you will also be a reference to some, um, what's it called, uh, source, uh, code sorcery uh, tool chains that are available, or in this case, there were some being provided by, um, by Adatel. Adaptiva themselves, but I was interested in having um, not just a binary download that I put onto my um, hard disk and that then bit ruts and don't, doesn't get any updates, but having a cross-compiler tool chain that actually um, can draw from our package updating processes in being you know, um, something that I can just uh, zipper up and have um, a newer version with the latest fixes. So how does, um, if we're looking at this particular case, oh, I'm very sorry. You should have seen the slide, and for some reason, this is never working the first time. This is what I was talking about here. Now you see it. Very sorry for that. Um, so, uh, um, so in this particular case, um, there is no Linux running on this chip. It's just um, code that the users would write themselves or that they would download from somewhere and then deploy to this um, chip for, for doing particular um, calculations, offering like an um, API for those operations. And uh, as such, they're not using um, the glibc that we're using, but newlib. And so far, we did not have um, newlib support in our, uh, GCC cross, in our GCC compiler packages, and I set out to uh, change that. Uh, what does this look like, package-wise? Um, we would have a cross um, Epiphany bin utils package, um, which contains the um, assembler and various tools. 
Um, that's kind of the easiest part. Um, pretty much anyone can just branch the um, bin utils package, um, define a, a new name, maybe have some a bit of um, um, uh, if if logic inside the uh, inside the spec file, and then usually if it's um, in the upstream bin utils package, um, it will just uh, build and be available. But uh, well, who wants to write um, assembly code all day these days? Um, now, um, usually you would just use the bin utils package. Um, Build your C library from there, and then use um, build a build a compiler package. Um, but in this case, um, what I was doing is um, I was inserting a special um, bootstrap stage. That is this uh, variable name here, GCC libc bootstrap. Whenever this is set, it means that not the full um, GCC. Um, is being built, but only the host parts of GCC. So GCC com um, consists of like the uh, and the GCC binary, um, but it also comes with things like uh, libgcc and um, um, some other things that are um, being built for the target system, and that in turn depend on having a C library, a standard C library available. Then, with the, the host-only compiler. Um, which, by the way, when you would build that just on your local machine, you can just uh, switch directories and then continue the build where you left. Here in the build service, um, I added a um, separate package that I simply gave this um, suffix dash bootstrap. Um, this could then be used as the build dependency of a cross dash epiphany new lib develop um, package for building the new lib uh, library. And then once we have the new lib library built and packaged, uh, we can use that as build dependency again in case that the uh, GCC libc bootstrap is not set um, to build um, both the host and the target parts of the cross compiler. Since um, or, okay, so um, originally I tried that for um, the following tool chains, uh, not just Epiphany, but I also tried this for the Renaissance R RX and the RL78 architectures. Um, originally I was using GCC 4.9, then I switched over to GCC 5. Um, and most recently, with some help from, uh, from Andes Corporation, I also tried a NDS 32LE build as the first one with uh, GCC 6. Also, there are a number of um, cross-compiler tool chains which are not yet entirely upstream accepted in both Bunutils and, and GCC. And one of those is the GNU Pro tool chain for the, uh, don't have one here, unfortunately, for the, the BeagleBone Black. And that's like a um, also a microcontroller for like real-time network processing and things on there. Um, that with um, appropriate Linux kernel drivers can have some code loaded to and then um, use that for, um, for whatever processing you want. Um, in that case, I simply branch the packages as a proof of concept, um, taking the, um, um, the particular um, git commit that the patches were based upon, using that as a tarball instead of the one that uh, we were usually packaging in, uh, in DVL-GCC and putting those patches on top just to build that. I think at the moment it's broken, but it should be relatively easy to uh, get back to work again. I think it was a new lib update that I did that uh, broke some things there. Um, maybe one or two weeks ago, the new lib package um, got accepted into uh, into Tumbleweed. Um, for now, this is just a very basic package. It's only the, the sources to actually use for um, building or deriving cross-compiled um, versions of new loop from. The, um, um, in theory, um, it would be possible to build a 32-bit x86 shared version of Newlib. Unfortunately, um, I have failed to actually get that to build with uh, the headers that uh, we were using for, for OpenSUSE. If um, anyone knows more about that particular topic, they're very welcome to uh, make that work as, um, as a proof of concept. Uh, but for now, um, the main point of that package is to have it as a starting point for having um, linked um, spec files. The GCC 5 package has um, successively been um, enhanced to have the, um, the necessary ifs 
for um, the, um, the dependencies and conditionals for which parts are going to be built and installed. Um, GCC 6 seemed to be missing a few of the preparations that we had gotten into the GCC 5 packet that was in particular for which architectures to actually go into the, the Mueller path, but that's fairly minor and the um, that uh, underscore build actually um, succeeded once I got those in, so I'm hoping that things are okay there. Um, one thing to watch out is that um, just because something built does not mean that it works. So um, it might be that um, some um, binaries are packaged in the wrong location and this will only um, then be noticed once we actually have a package or um, a, a local test script that is using the compiler to compile a particular um, C file with certain um, include dependencies or something to, to trigger the failure. What's next for now? Um, it would be very nice if we could um, get some of the stuff, not necessarily all of uh, what I've been um, playing with, into the official DBL GCC repository as next step. So basically uh, use the um, base system newlet package and link it into DBL GCC with appropriate um, either as new lib or directly as a cross-compiled version and add the necessary um, architectures to the pre-check and script to, uh, um, to have new lib libraries for um, particular architectures. I believe we already have bin utils available for, um, for Epiphany, for instance. Um, and then also, um, Beyond newlib, of course, that's not the only uh, way that cross compilers can be built. There is both uh, UC libc. Um, I have an, um, or at least I used to have um, a um, cross compiler toolchain in uh, Homey Farber UC Linux um, that was using UC libc for a, a no MMU um, ARM build, what was formerly known as UC Linux or MUC Linux, sorry. And also, I've been using a very similar concept for um, the glibc-based OpenSUSE MIP support that I was talking about um, earlier. Um, the question here is, um, in theory, we could um, go along and check which architectures are actually available in bin utils, which ones are available in uh, GCC, and simply um, enable all of them. However, since GCC is a very core component of our architecture, the more stuff um, that we don't need, we enable, um, the more likely the risk for, for breakage that would um, interfere with submissions to, to factories. So we'll have to um, have a discussion about what the same set of, um, um, of targets is. And for instance, um, since um, in OpenSUSE we do not have tools um, to actually um, transfer um, or L78 um, binaries to some microcontroller board. For me, that would be the first candidate not to put into MDVL GCC initially. Whereas for um, the RX architecture, there's like the um, Sakura board, that's a small microcontroller board in a very uh, pink color um, that you can simply can, uh, connect to your PC as a USB mass storage device, copy the file onto there, and uh, then uh, run it via pressing a button. Um, or not even that. Um, so it's relatively easy to actually use from our Linux system, so I guess that would be one of the, the candidates for, for actually having in there. And uh, one topic that I have not yet looked into myself is that there's obviously not only the compiler to compile code, but once you actually have um, code compiled and deployed to some target or running under emulation, then you might actually want to debug it. So I do not have, uh, um, I have not yet looked into um, having cross versions of the GDP built at the moment. Um, if anyone is interested or has looked into that before, that might also be interesting to attendees. Now, as a final slide, I have a brief overview. Um, if you remember um, this slide here, sorry, here, then we were seeing that um, obviously we have um, here it is. 
We have the, the bin utils as the, the base tools that we need for, for building any um, target code. And uh, then we had a bootstrap package and then the full package with um, the, uh, um, the library package in between. And if we compare that to, to glibc, it gets slightly more complicated. So as a first step, uh, we need to package the Linux kernel headers. Then, um, for building glibc, we need uh, just the same as be sorry, just the same as before. We need a, a, a bootstrap variant of the GCC compiler um, in order to next build um, glibc. Um, then um, a glibc debel bootstrap package, um, which then um, builds the, um, or packages the uh, glibc headers, and an interim version of um, libc. And um, that one we can then use in a second intermediate GCC um, build um, for actually building the libs GCC with this interim glibc. And then, which is kind of, you know, just a stub set of, of binaries that are there to, uh, to please um, the build system. And then we can actually, once we've built libgcc as part of this mini GCC5, which cannot yet build, build much more, uh, we then build um, the final version of glibc. And once we have glibc finally built, we can then build the final uh, GCC cross compiler. Uh, you will note that uh, I'm using GCC5 here. That's simply because um, um, in the um, OBS server that I've been using for MIPS, um, I still had um, this based on GCC5. Um, and for um, GCC6, uh, we may need to be doing a few um, additional ifs there. And in particular, um, one issue to keep in mind there when building those um, cross-compilers is that um, we sometimes have a choice or kind of a conflict between installing um, target files into the um, sysroot, which is the USR and then the triple name slash sysroot for us, or installing it into the root file system. Um, so we've kind of, I think, taken a quite hacky um, intermediate approach where we are um, installing target binaries into the ZUS root, where we definitely uh, need them for, for, um, for using them for, um, for, for cross builds, but also um, having some things like the um, lib standard C++ headers be reused from the native GCC5 um, package, which means that uh, we cannot have um, the, um, the cross GCC5 package install the same host files as the cross package. So um, we need to um, not just install them to a different location, but we then need to also move some files around, but not others, and delete some other files in order to make this file. So this is a little fiddly and was, I guess, the main reason why this was um, um, for, for quite a long time not yet really being um, attacked. Um, for user libc, it works quite similar, although um, I admit that the, the, um, the current status that I have in, um, the, um, in, in my home repository and the, uh, the user Linux repository is uh, quite hackish. It was using um, a random set of, of kernel um, headers that I um, actually um, generated on my, my local machine. Whereas in this case, um, as indicated above here, um, I was using some uh, a bit of macro magic and, and tools in order to just get that from the latest um, version of the kernel source package available in that uh, repository. So basically we're using the, um, the host's kernel headers in order to generate um, the target headers. Whether that is a good idea is up for discussion, which is the next point of topic right now. Any questions, comments, or suggestions? To the right in the front, a microphone, please. Uh, 
If you could recall slide number five for a second, please. If you could recall slide number five for a second, please. Mm -hmm. So, I'm answering the question, which of all the possible targets to use this one? There's a shameless plug I want to put in here, and since, since about, for, for at least two years, Friedrich Sturber and me included, we have been somewhat working on uh, the Windows target, which is <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> where I think you can uh, draw quite some inspiration for spec files and uh, cross-compiling with and without glibc. So that's one of the things to bring here. So I admit that I have been using that also for cross-compiling some, some packages. Um, my understanding was that, yes, it, it was like also most of the other stuff in, in cross-compiler, um, uh, sorry, cross-toolchain, um, it was using totally separate source code packages. Is that correct? It uses, it uses one, so for example, the GCC uses one build service package uh, which contains three spec files for the three stages of GCC grief. Okay. But it's separate um, GCC packages, not the ones directly linked or reused from Devel GCC. That was my question. Yes, they are separate. Okay. And this is why they also look rather clean compared to uh, the SUSE GCC. Okay, so um, you have one bootstrap step, and that's sufficient for, for Windows? No, there are three, three steps. Three, three steps. So in whole three, or three intermediate, and then a final? Just the way you okay, have on the same way as here, okay, yeah. So this one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the one with new lib, in fact. Uh, well, there's only two, then. There's the bootstrap and the full one. Yeah, okay, in, for, the, for, the, for the Windows target, we use the full cross-compiler to build itself for the target architecture so that we get the libstdc++ DLL6, because you don't get that from the cross-compiler. Uh, actually, you can. Possibly. I, I believe so. So it's, uh, I think by default, it's, um, so there's a, a setting in the, um, no, I think for, for GCC, it's not in the pre-check-in, it's in change spec. So I think there is a, a variable in the top which determines um, which um, languages are being built. And for one, it uh, not every architecture actually can build the C++ compiler, of course, but obviously for, for Windows and x86 architecture, that should not be the limiting factor, but it's, it's probably just a setting that could be enabled. So it, it might be possible to, to maybe merge the two then. But I, since I'm not a tool train developer myself and just, you know, a random contributor kind of, I can't make any promises as to what actually gets accepted into Devel GCC. And I did not spot Rich C or uh, Matthias Matz or anyone from Andreas Schwab or anyone else from the um, tool train team here to um, actually comment on that. Further comments or questions? Okay. Okay, uh, so like a year and a half ago, I was also toying around with cross compilers for some ARM and also MIPS words I have. And back then I tried cross tool ng to get the tool chain. And it was uh, uh, quite a mess because you had to try different versions of all the uh, components of the tool chain to get it to run. <laughs> Is that still like that? So do you mm -hmm. still need to try different combinations? Um, so yes. Um by, by nature of, of our OBS and our packaging guidelines or our policies, um, tools like cross tool ng or there's others like, like there. I think you can also use something like um, not not busybox. What's the same project? Build root. I think you can also use build root to to build cross compiler tool chains for for certain um, architectures. Um, they all either assume that they have network connectivity to download packages from the internet, or they um, specifically rely on having like the um, source code tarballs in specific locations. And um, 
what I what I've seen for for Extensa um, in in cross tool chain that simply violates the uh, um, philosophy of the open source factory where you have one source code tarball per package and not you know like um, binutil GCC libraries and GCC and and whatnot all thrown into one um, one source package alongside the the tool. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. I think we have to, to cut off now. We're already five minutes over time. Thank you very much for your time. And let's hope that we can find a way to um, get this uh, working into Tumbleweed fairly soon. Thank you. <laughs>